don't have any depth. And the reason they don't have any depth is because they've missed on so many guys in the draft process, right? And I also think you've got a coaching staff that, you know, uh, has their strengths on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. But I think Cliff has really, really struggled in this game and really all year in his whole career, at least in the NFL, with coaching situational football handling the play clock and, and, and handling the game clock, things of that nature. And so I think what we've seen from Kyler is some regression um, because of, of, in my view, the lack of, of coaching, the lack of, of development and what he's been able to get away with. You know, really, it's interesting we were talking about, you know, for an elite quarterback or your franchise quarterback, you alluded to it, you have to, you're, it's all about winning. You can, I don't care if you throw for 500 yards a game or whatever, it's all about winning. And the details in coaching, I, I said, look, when, when Kyler runs, he's got to understand, he's got to put the ball away. Even at times toward the end of the first half, where that yeah, ball got tipped out or knocked out, put the ball away, tuck it, whatever you have to do. But it's the little detail things that I see him missing in order for them to win, where they have opportunities. In that case, get three points, 20 seconds left, or maybe you get seven points, you take the lead, or you're not, at least you're tied at halftime. I think that's what's frustrating for guys like myself and you, and I think for fans going, well, he's making the same fumbles as he did a few weeks ago against Seattle. Same thing. No, I, I agree, but it's also what he's allowed to get away with. There's so many times where he's running down the field and he's carrying the football as if he's going to throw it, yet he's 30 or 40 yards, 20 yards, <laughs> 10 yards down the field. Right. He's allowed to get away with these things. Here, here's an example. You're, when you're allowed, if, if, when you play the quarterback position, if your coach allows you not to carry out your play fakes after handoffs, that's what you'll do. If you're allowed to have terrible ball handling in your mesh points or in your play action passes, then that's what you'll do. If you're allowed to take the wrong drops, then, then that's what's going to happen. And to me, your development is going to show that. That's what, Kyler is allowed to do whatever Kyler wants to do on every single play and it's really hard to be consistent that way when you're playing a sport that's very rules oriented but when you're also playing a position that's very dependent on other people it's why when you look at the stats kyler usually always has good stats yes he only threw for 170 yards on i think 25 completions but he still had a very high completion percentage he still threw two touchdowns i believe yes. and didn't have any interceptions Yes, he had the fumble, which seems to happen a lot. He had the negative plays, taking sacks, which seems to happen a lot to him. But at the end of the day, I just believe that Kyler Murray is kind of like the Russell Westbrook of football. It's like <laughs> Kyler's always going to put up really great stats. He's an incredible player. But it, it's almost really difficult to win with him just because of the style that he plays with. And so you're kind of in a, in a little bit of a conundrum. He's He's an incredible talent. He's an incredible player. He's an incredible athlete. But I just don't know if, if it's going to be able to fit within the rest of the, the team sport on a position that's so incredibly reliant on other players. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but to me it does, so I apologize. No, you're fine. <laughs> you, 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 we, we all understand the language you're speaking right now, Rudy. <laughs> Rudy, my, my question is, and Manucci and I had a conversation about it before we came on the air today, and I wanted to follow up with you. Does the offensive makeshift line, is that still a legit excuse or not? I mean, uh, if I'm the coaching staff, uh, yeah, it's a legit excuse. If I'm Kyler Murray, hell yeah, it's a legit excuse. If you're, if you're someone that's been in and around the NFL or played in the NFL, you understand how important offensive line play is, especially when you're talking about all the different blitzes and defensive fronts and exotic pressures that teams bring. It's so hard to, to be able to block those different schemes, you got to be on the same page. You got to be one unit, and you need a lot of reps together as a unit for that to happen. There's no doubt it's it's an excuse. But if you're a fan that goes to work from nine to five, and you you pay your hard earned money to buy season tickets to sit in the lower bowl, like no, you don't care. 
These are all dudes who are making more money in a game than you make in six months. You don't want to hear none of it. You want to see these people win. You want to see them compete. You want to see them uh, uh, put, put, it, put forth a better effort. You want to see them win more than one home game. Then I think they've won one home game in the last like 14 months or something crazy, right? So it's like, it's like, you know, come on, they don't care. So to answer your question, no, it's not an excuse any longer. I think you're right, Rudy. I talked to some guys that went to the game yesterday. They're, just, they're fed up. They're season ticket holders. They're done. They're like, this This is not worth the money. Not worth the money at all. Hey, uh, do you feel that uh, this front office will pull the trigger on Cliff, or you think they'll uh, wait th- wait for the, till the season ends, if they're going to do anything at all? Well, well, I'm actually glad, like, I'm glad you, you asked that question, because I, I think that's what the real frustration is. Yeah. I think the real frustration is with the fact that that well, essentially extended. I mean, <laughs> look, we don't really know what goes on with these NFL coaches' contracts and the GM contracts. We don't really know because the, the, the details never get released. Like the player contracts, you can find those, right? And we don't really know, but like from what we're told, Cliff Kingsbury got an extension, right? Mm-hmm. From 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 what we're told, Steve Kime got an extension, right? And I I, I, I I think that's true, and, and I believe that's what the problem is with the fan base. I think the fan base is upset based on how last season ended, based on really how every season ended since has been here. And I think most of the fan base feels as if, why would they go and extend these guys' contracts? Why, why would they do that? They didn't do premature. They didn't need to do that because now we're in a situation where it's going to be much, much more difficult to fire Cliff if you've just extended his contract and you owe him a bunch more money, right? But it also makes it difficult when most people believe you have a really, really good coach out there in Sean Payton who who could probably, the worst case, could probably come here and make Kyler Murray a better player, right? I mean, he at least has the track record with scheme and offensive play, execution, quarterback development. We think that he can come here and, and at least, you know, coach up Kyler Murray and get much more out of Kyler. So real quick, Rudy, so if that is the case, let's just, just hypothetical here. Uh, the Indy job is going to be open now. The Carolina job is open now. All right. Um, and Peyton's going to be able to, if he wants to come back, he'll be able to pick where he wants to go. Two. Do you think he would lean towards Arizona if that was a choice because of Kyler? Because he's got the quarterback? Those other two teams really don't? I mean, I would imagine that Sean Peyton's going to want to go somewhere where he I mean, he's going to have a lot of control. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. He's going to want to go somewhere he can golf. He's going to want to go somewhere the weather is good. <laughs> he's going to want to play an indoor place, right? Yeah. His offense is better that way. Yeah, I mean, He's going to want to have a lot of control, I think, over the draft and over the 53-man roster and all that stuff, right? But, you know, I don't know if they're willing to give him that here in Arizona, but you do have a quarterback. The Colts don't, you know, the the, the Carolina Panthers is a, is a really weird, crazy situation, too. I, I think this is a good spot for a guy like Sean Payton, but it's not like the Bidwells are known for, you know, opening up the – the, the just writing blank checks and if you're going to move on from Cliff Kingsbury you're probably going to move on from Steve Kime too so now you got to write a lot of checks and then you're going to have to write a big old check to Sean Payton I just don't know if it makes sense I, I personally I just don't believe that Cliff Kingsbury is going to get fired. one I think the only way that Cliff gets fired is if this thing gets much worse yeah Rudy we always enjoy it buddy have a great week thanks for the time all right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Rudy Carpenter.